रेनु रे On this occasion, I will convey the history of Lyuvagild. Luvagild, Luvagild, Liavagild, or Leovagildo was a Visigothic king of Hispania and Septimania from 568 to April 21, 586. From 585 he was also king of Galicia. Known for his Codex Revisus or Code of Liavagild, a unifying law allowing equal rights between the Visigothic and Hispano-Roman population, his kingdom covered most of modern Spain down to Toledo. He was born circa 525. The Visigoths were still a military aristocracy and kings had to be formally ratified by the nobility. Visigoths and their Ibero-Roman subjects were still separated by religion and by distinct law codes. Luvigild modified the old code of Uric which governed the Goths and created his own Codex Revisus. He also repealed old Roman laws dating back to the late 4th century forbidding intermarriage between Visigoths and Ibero-Romans, strategies of distinction, construction of ethnic communities, 300-800 by Walter Pohl, ISBN ISBN 90-04-10846-7. Luvigild further secured a peaceful succession, a perennial Visigothic issue, by associating his two sons, Hermenegild and Rechtcaird, with himself in the kingly office and placing certain regions under their regencies. Hermenegild, the elder, was married to Inguthis, daughter of the Frankish king Sigebert I. In 582 Lovagild captured Merida, which had been under the political control of its popular bishop Masona since the early 570s. Masona was soon after exiled for three years, possibly in the context of the rebellion of Hermenegild. Hermenegild had converted to Orthodox Christianity, persuaded by his Frankish wife Inguntis and Leander, Bishop of Seville. After his father, who considered this conversion treason, insisted on appointing Arians as bishops, Bietica in 583 revolted under the leadership of Hermenegild, who was supported by the Orthodox bishops. When the Byzantines failed to aid the revolt, Lovagild besieged and took Seville and banished his son to Valencia, where he was murdered by Lovagild's agents. Leander of Seville was also banished and later canonized as a saint. Inguntis was delivered to the Eastern Emperor Tiberius II Constantine and was last heard of in Africa. These events are described in vivid details by Pope Gregory I. After this rebellion, Lovagild reportedly demanded that his Roman subjects convert to Arianism. Lovagild went on to subdue the Basques. In the north Lovagild took advantage of internecine friction among Swaby factions in dispute over a succession and, in 584, he defeated the Swabic Kingdom in the Great Battle of Braga George Washington Green, History and Geography of the Middle Age for Colleges and Schools, New York, 1851 and added the kingdom to his crowns. By the end of his reign, only the Basque lands and two small territories of the Byzantine Empire made up the non-Visigothic parts of Iberia. Lovagild's last year was troubled by open war with the Franks along his northernmost borders. But overall, Lovagild was one of the more effective Visigothic kings of Hispania, the restorer of Visigothic unity, ruling from his capital newly established at Toledo, where he settled toward the end of his reign. Isidore of Seville records that he ruled for 18 years and died a natural death in Toledo, in the era 624, Historia de Regibus Gotharum, Bandalorum et Suevarum, 51-52. The Visigoths in Hispania considered themselves the heirs of Western Roman imperial power, not its enemies. Until Lovagild's reign, the Visigoths minted coins that imitated the imperial coinage of Byzantium which circulated from Byzantine possessions in Bietica. From the reign of Lovagild onwards, however, the Visigothic kingdom issued coarse coinage of its own designs. While facing the rebellion in southern Hispania, Lovagild struck an issue of Tremises with a cross on steps on the reverse, 
a design that had been introduced for the very first time on Byzantine Solidi by Emperor Tiberius II. That's the history that I can convey this time, I hope it's useful, don't forget to share, like and subscribe.